This video is on the objective complete the steps of a two mean hypothesis test with population standard deviations, you know, SDs, known. And this is the critical value approach. So this is, you know, you're testing about the difference between two pop two independent populations means. Uh, and this, the fact that the standard deviations are known, all that tells us is that we're eventually going to be using a normal distribution, right? Our test statistic will be a Z score and not a not a T score. And uh, let's get into it. So again, if you want to see more about this, what they have to say on it, you know, click on more instruction. Look at their videos, their notes, their examples. Uh, hopefully those help you out. All right, so question here. Uh, during the 1981 Major League Baseball season, the National League players averaged 56 hits. Uh, with a known with a known standard deviation of 7.45 this was calculated from a random sample of 30 players who met the minimum at bat requirements the american league averaged 58 hits with a known standard deviation of 6.39 and this was calculated from a random sample of 30 players who met the minimum bat at bat requirements all right, so the samples are sufficiently large, right? They're at least 30. They're randomly taken, random samples. We're assuming independence here, right? National League players' results shouldn't have any effect on American League players' batting results. And also the population standard deviations are known, right? The known standard deviation for National League and American League batters. So let sample one represent the National League and sample two represent the American League. All right, so the question is, is there enough evidence at a 10% level of significance, right? Alpha equals 0.1, to claim the National League players earned less hits on average per player than the American League? So they're asking us first here to find critical values and whatnot. Okay, let's just go through all the steps. All, right, all the steps. So again, mu1, I'll write out what these mean. Mu1 is going to be the... Uh, yeah, the average number of hits per player in this 1981 season, but I'm not going to write all that. Uh, an average, average number of hits per player in the National League. I'll well, say NL National League. And mu2 will be the pop, again, the population mean or population average. The average number of hits per player in the AL, right, the American League. Okay. Now, every hypothesis test you've come across so far you know, has a claim that's being tested, or some belief, or some 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 attribute being being uh, investigated, or whatever. Now, the claim here, we're we're asked in the question, you know, is there enough evidence at alpha equals 0.1 level of significance to claim? The National League players earned less hits on average per player than the American League. So the claim is that we're testing here is that the National League average number of hits per player is less than the American League average number of average hits per player. Mu1 is less than mu2. Or if we take a look at you know the you know do, uh, write this in terms of the difference between the means that mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. Right. Now, once a claim is established, right, you can set up your hypotheses. Null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. 
Now this does not involve equality, right? This claim, there's no equals. Uh, so that's going to be represented by the alternative hypothesis that that the difference in these population averages is less than zero. Right? That mu1 is less than mu2. The null hypothesis is the opposite of that. Right? That mu1 minus mu2 is greater than or equal to zero, but again, most of the time they're just writing the equals. Right, we are, we're going to be assuming the following. Right? We're going to be assuming that mu1 minus mu2 equals zero, right? or that mu1 equals mu2. So we're going to assume that the average number of hits by players in the National League is equal to the average number of hits by players in the American League and then see if we like that assumption or not later. Are we going to reject this or fail to reject this? Now something else you can tell by the way the hypotheses look is what kind of a test you're running. Right? Uh, this is the parameter is less than some value. So this is a left tailed test. Right? If it was greater than it would be a right tailed test. If it was uh, not equal to it would be a two tailed test. Right? Hopefully all that sounds familiar. Right? You've seen plenty of hypotheses tests by now. All right. Uh, then the significance level was mentioned, right? That was 10 percent, 0.10, or 0 0.1. Right. Then we take a look at our samples. Take a look at the two samples, these independent samples, one from the National League one from the American League. Right? So we have the NL batters right? and the American League, the AL batters. Okay. Uh, they said they took 30 National League batters, right? so N1 is 30. The average for them was uh, 56, right? so X1 bar 56. And this is separate, but you know they told us that the population standard deviation, right? sigma 1, uh, the population standard deviation for the National League players was 7.45 hits. Right, and then the sample of American League batters, you know, there were 30 of them as well. And so N2 is 30. Uh, the, the, the average hits per player for these 30 was 58. And again, this is separate, but still about the American League. The standard deviation for the entire league, the entire American League, Sigma 2, is given to us as you know, 6.39 hits. Right. Okay. So now comes our test statistic, which again is a z-score. Right. And here is the formula for it. When, with, when you're talking about the, you know, testing the difference in our sample means, our independent sample means, the numerator is just what is that difference? So x1 bar minus x2 bar. Then technically we're going to go minus zero here, right? We're we're assuming that the population difference is zero. So how far away from zero is this? So you could go minus zero if you want, but there's no need to write minus zero. And then divide that by the standard deviation for difference in the, the distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Right? The standard error for the, the distribution of the difference in sample means. And that was this big square root. Right? It was the square root of you know, sigma 1 squared divided by n1 plus sigma 2 squared divided by n2. All right, so let me put all this stuff in, get our test statistic for this test. Uh, in the numerator, you have 56 minus 58 divided by, and then the square root of you know, sigma 1 squared, right, 7.45 squared divided by 30, right, divided by n1, plus, and then sigma 2 squared, 6.39 squared divided by 30. And just you know, make sure when you're entering this that all of that is underneath the square root symbol. I'm going to pull up the calculator, and we will calculate this z-score, this test statistic. Now the numerator is just negative 2, right? so I'm going to put a negative 2 divided by 
and then square root and again just make sure all of this is inside the square root symbol we have 7.45 squared uh, divided by 30 plus and then 6.39 squared also divided by 30 and that's all underneath the square root so we're getting here negative 1.11 And this is one thing they asked us for. They asked us to round, round the test statistic to the hundredths place, right? two decimal places. Actually, that would round to 1.12, wouldn't it? Sorry. Because it's uh, 1.116. Uh, so if you round to the nearest hundredth, that'd be negative 1.12. Right, so the difference in our sample, you know, the sample they took, the, the difference in those sample means is 1.12 standard deviations below zero, below the, the, the assumed mean difference from the null hypothesis. Okay, and let's take a look at a, a, a Z distribution, right, the standard normal. I'll draw a picture of the standard normal distribution. You got a number line with Z scores and you know symmetrical bell-shaped curve above that and you know the Z score under the peak is a z-score of zero. And uh, now let's find our critical value. Again, this is a this is a left-tailed test, so there should only be one critical value. Right. And it should be in the left, you know, in the left to the left of the of the middle. So let's find our critical value and you know set up our rejection region which again is going to be a left tail here. Now, I already said alpha, right? Alpha is 10%. So what I'm looking for is, you know, what's the Z score? What's this value here? So that the area to the left, right, left tail, is 10%. Area equals 0 0.10. Well, remember the area, uh, the, the Z score with 10% above it was this Z with the 0 0.10 subscript. So we're just taking the opposite of that, right? So I'm going to find the Z score with 10% above it on our table that's given to us and find the opposite of this. All right, so here, see the Z score with 10% above it is 1.282. So our critical value is negative 1.282. Right. Uh, there's our critical value. Now the question is, does our test statistic fall in this region, this, this left tail with an area of alpha, right, an area of 10%? And the answer is no. You know, negative 1.12 is not beyond negative 1.282. Right. Uh, my, my test statistic is not in that rejection region. All right, but for right now, let me just enter that stuff. We got they asked us to you know, enter the test statistic rounded to two decimal places, right? That was, uh, oh, they already tell us that we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, negative 1.12, and the critical value was you know, negative uh, 1.282. Right, and they're already telling us we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, right? Like, look back here, and you're seeing my test statistic. Right? My test statistic is not in the rejection region. So we would, you know, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Right? We don't reject it. So going back to my hypotheses, right? we're not going to reject that assumption. Right? We're keeping this. We're keeping this. And this was the statement that these averages were equal. Right? That the average number of hits per player in the National League is the same as the na average in the American League. And if we're keeping that, that means we're not supporting the alternate. 
and the alternate was the claim. So, and we're not supporting the claim here. We're going to say there's not enough evidence to support that claim that you know the average number of hits per player in the National League was less than the average number of hits per player in the American League. All right. But again, they're telling us we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic, you know, negative 1.12 is greater than our critical value, neg negative 1.282. It's like, great, you nailed it. And then I'm sure there's more where you have to state a conclusion. Oh, they're telling us at the end here. This is silly. You see, they found the test statistic the same way I did earlier. And then look. Um, see, there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the National League players had less hits on average than the American League players. All right, so this is a little different than... In, you know, in previous sections where you had the objective of completing the steps of a hypothesis test, you know, they had a lot of steps listed out here. It's just, give me the test statistic, give me the critical value, and that's it, all right? So I'm going to put up another one here uh, on this objective after this. But, um, yeah, so hopefully, again, watching me write things out, maybe clicking on more instruction, you know, looking at the answer explanations when they come up. Hopefully all that stuff helps you out when you're working on this material on your own. And thanks for watching.